Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, which is about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is Ted Davenport. He is the franchisor for Subway restaurants in Hawaii, and he's the franchisee for Ruby Tuesday, Gyukaku, and Rainbow Drive-In. And today, we are going beyond restaurants. Hey, Teddy. Hey, Russ, thank you for having me here. Oh, Appreciate great it. having you on the show today. Thank you. You know, you, you've done so many things in your life, but I want to go back to the beginning. Where did you grow up at? I was born in Washington, D.C., came to Hawaii when I was just short of five years old. Grew up in Hawaii Kai my whole life. Wow. Yeah. So what schools did you attend? I attended Cocoa Elementary, Haiheone Elementary, New Valley, Intermediate and Kaiser High School. Cougars. Nice. Go Cougars. Yeah. <laughs> did you play any sports or what did you do? I did. I'm an avid sportsman. I played four years of football, uh, two years of basketball. I did three years of track and one year of baseball. And then I did a lot of outside sports uh, in the community. Cool. Well, I mean, yeah. you're tall. I mean, you, you better be playing those sports. I was a high jumper. <laughs> <laughs> and then tell me about your college life. Uh, I left... Uh, University of Hawaii, I actually had Dick Tomey believe in me and uh, asked me to walk on to the University of Hawaii. The first week uh, in practice, for freshman only, I broke my left foot. Oh. Spent the year I couldn't play because I had to have it rebuilt, had to wire it. And they, uh, you know, basically told me to stay part time because I wasn't on scholarship, I was a walk on. So I went to school part time, came back the following year, and uh, as a full time student, I went out, I uh, was on the roster, didn't get to play, wasn't that good, Yeah. and uh, went through that first year, and then the next year I took off and went to Merced College, Okay. and the, the class of 1980, and I was a, a sophomore at that time, did that uh, for about six months, I said I had enough of that, decided to come back, go enroll back into school, I was thinking about playing football, and I realized, you know what, I wanted to go out in the workforce and try something, see where I wanted to be. So, so if we backtrack just a little, what was your first job that you got paid for? Paid for? Yeah. Oh, would be uh, Magoo's Pizza or really? APK. I was the chicken man. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And then you also, a after that, you also worked at a florist? Well, I lasted two days at uh, Magoo's. Okay. I was 14. I wasn't supposed to be working. Okay. And uh, they told me probably best that I don't. <laughs> and then when I was 16, my neighbor owned Hawaii Kai Flores, and uh, his driver ended up in a problem, so they needed a driver for the summer, and I started driving and uh, became a professional laymaker, and uh, delivered uh, fl uh, delivered flowers all throughout the uh, Oahu and picked up flowers from from Hilo, you know, coming in at Hawaiian Airlines. Uh, and it was fun. It was it was a good good learning uh, thing for me. Yeah. And I did it again the, su the next summer. And anytime there was the holidays and my neighbor needed help. I did that. Interesting. Yeah. Now, you, you have a beautiful family, and your family's growing right now. Yes. Tell me about your wife and kids. Uh, I met my wife in 1989, and uh, we started dating shortly after that, and uh, got married in 1992. Okay. Uh, she, and I was a fireman at the time. Yeah. And we ended up, and I ended up you know, getting the subway business, and she was a resident manager at a, at a condo in Makiki. And we ended up, uh, I ended up, you know, uh, developing the subway on Alakea, and she would come down and help me out during lunchtime, and then eventually she decided to make it a full-time thing, and to this day, she's a full-time subway owner, operator, and wife. Great. <laughs> and mother. <laughs> yeah. And what about your son and daughter? My son uh, attended Kalani High School. He went to University of Washington, uh, did a year at Waseda University in Japan. Graduated University of Washington as a, and became an engineer for Apple back when he was hired by Steve Jobs. Wow! To uh, and he works as an engineer, which he won't tell me what he does. <laughs> so I never know what he does. I can't visit him in his office. But at this point, he lives in Japan. Okay. He heads up uh, worldwide uh, testing. Still won't tell me what he does. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he ended up getting married to a, a, a lovely lady. Her name is Romy. She's from uh, East Berlin. Okay. Uh, grew up on the eastern side of the wall, you know, until 10 years old. 
a very interesting uh, story. But they met at Waseda University, fell in love, and I have two lovely granddaughters now, and, and they still reside in Japan. Awesome. And what about your daughter? My daughter, Leana, she uh, attended uh, Sacred Hearts School, went on to uh, Northern uh, Arizona for a year, and then to University of Oregon, where she graduated. And uh, then she went on to Subway University <laughs> right after that, believe it or not. And at this present time, she's, uh, she's learning how to make bologna. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. I, yeah. I like how they're all connected somehow. And, you know, you, you have such an interesting story, Teddy, that, I mean, our viewers are just going to be amazed at, you know, how you started and how, you know, what you're doing today. Mm -hmm. But tell me about the limo service that you started back in the day. Uh, when I uh, left college, I was looking for work. I went down to the Hyatt Regency and applied for a security job. That My friend was in security, so it was open. Went upstairs to the um, HR department. Yeah. So I would like to apply for this uh, security job, which they said just got taken about an hour ago. But how would you like to drive limo? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I never have, but yeah, I'd love to. So they said, yeah, we, we have a, you know, an opening part-time if you'd be interested. I said, yeah. They said, well, you're hired. So I uh, ended up driving part-time for the Hyatt for about three weeks, and that actually made me full-time. One gentleman left. They actually opened the first Bose uh, retail place okay. in the United States here in Hawaii. And uh, I loved the job, just dealing with people, driving people, meeting people. I felt, you know, this would be something I could probably do. Yeah. You, know, maybe, you know, they don't teach that at the University of Hawaii limo driving, so I said, you know, maybe I can learn myself. And I had a few people believe in me, and I did a business plan. And I bought my first limo through uh, Bank of Honolulu at the time. The uh, president, Jack Cordaway, uh, this guy Dave Lewis was a developer, and a couple of his partners uh, helped me out okay. and um, put me on the road. And I was able to take that business, sell the business to all these vendors, and realize, man, I got something going here. <laughs> so I, I went out and got two more limos. Okay. I mean, I had uh, three limos in about six to eight weeks from the time I got my first one. And uh, we just kept on growing and growing, but not buying more limos. We were doing more contract work with other people, so we didn't have to have the liabilities. And I had to pay my bills. Yeah. So uh, you know, it, it turned out to be really, really you know, exciting business. It was wearing, but it was exciting. Uh, I ended up uh, selling the business, and I ended up end up as a purser for Continental Airlines. And I did okay. that. Uh, I, I, well, I was doing both actually during the time. And I, then, uh, when I was my end of my career at Continental, which lasted about six years. I decided I wanted to stay home because my son was, uh, I remember him 18 months and then six, seven years old. Mm -hmm. So I said, it's time I spent some time with him. I took the test for the fire department, finished up pretty high. Then the fire department, then I sold my business. So, so once you became a firefighter, mm -hmm. how, how long were you a firefighter for? 11 years and then one year on disability. Okay. Yeah. And how was that experience for you? I mean, going, you know, through, at the fire department? Oh, it it's, teaches you a lot. Teaches you about life. You know, it, it doesn't matter how old you are, how rich you are, life is not your call, you know, so things can happen to you at any time. So you, you learn to appreciate life, appreciate people. You know, you don't take things for granted, you know, and um, understand this is, a, you know, you're not, you're not here forever. Yeah. And that's what I really learned. You know, I don't care who you are. You know, we, we just, we, we go through cycles in life and live it find out what you like to do and live. That's, that's really what the fire department taught me. You know? Yeah, and, and you know, everyone needs to appreciate what the, you know, firefighters do, especially with all the latest fires in California, but very impressed that, that you're a firefighter. Now, I wanna ask you, Teddy, how did the whole Subway thing begin with you? Okay, uh, well, the first time I went to Subway was 1978. My cousin played football for University of North Carolina. There was one on campus that opened up, and he said, it's the bomb. Okay. So uh, I went there, and the lines were probably 100 deep. It was the first one to open in North Carolina. I uh, ended up eating this sub called the Italian Express. Meatball, sausage, meatball. I probably ate it two weeks straight. <laughs> but I had to go at like midnight because the line, there was no lines. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I really liked it. And then when I started flying for the airlines, as we were visiting places, I would see the subway sign. And I started, you know, I wanted to go by, get that Italian Express, which they didn't have, but they had the meatball. And I started trying different sandwiches. I said, this is the greatest sandwich. I said, we don't have anything like this in Hawaii, <laughs> nothing. So when the time came, I was sitting here, the first one opened up by the police, the old police station, and on the napkin it said, dial 
or 1-800-888-4848 if you're interested in franchising. Uh -huh. So I did. That's kind of the start of uh, my career at Subway. Wow. And then you told me about you had a missed opportunity and then you had another opportunity that presented itself. Absolutely. What, what happened right there with that second opportunity? Well, the guy that um, brought Subway to Hawaii, he came to me uh, when I, after I called. I met him in his car. Yeah. I was working out of his car. And he said, you know, we have an opportunity on Pearl Harbor. It would be the first military base in the world. Uh, and I never, to be honest, I grew up here, never visited Pearl Harbor. And I don't know why, because in elementary school we did, uh, I might have been sick. I don't yeah. know. You know, we used to you know, do tours. Right? Yeah. And our excursions, they would call it. But I ended up, you know, having that opportunity. I looked at it. And I just remember reading the paper. They're laying off. They're laying off. And I thought, oh, the military base is probably not enough. It's, it's closed. I mean, there's not that many people there. So I walked away from the deal and um, didn't think twice about it. I said, you know what? I'm a fireman. I work 10 days a month. I got Kaimana Beach. I got <laughs> Makapu. I got everything in front of me. And I get, you know, my son, you know, so... To me, that was the value at the time, and then I find out that uh, that store was doing, I mean, twenty-seven thousand a week. With, this was back in nineteen eighty-nine. Jeez. And twenty-seven thousand a week. It cost fifty-seven thousand to build. It was paid off in six weeks. Oh. And you know, and I love the food business, and I and I, I love people, and I thought, gosh, I'm just going to take a hammer and hit myself in the head because <laughs> that was probably an opportunity that, you know. And to this day, it's still a great store. So I sat there for a couple of years and thought about it, you know. And uh, one day I was cooking. I was at Hawaii Kai Fire Station. I was cooking for the firehouse, and I ran into the guy that developed Subway, and he pretty much pointed in my face and said, "You <laughs> missed out on this great opportunity. You, you know, need to get into this business because you know I think you do well." And so, you did. Well, I went back. I was cooking, thinking about it. So I probably screwed up the stew or something because I. You know, I'm thinking too much. The next day, I went to his office, said, I'm in. I said, let's do it. Wow. And I never looked back. So I opened up uh, Halakea Subway and uh, went on to own 14, 15 different subways, you know, throughout the deal and bought, bought him out, bought the developer out and never looked back. And how many current subways are there in Hawaii right now? 119. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so. Now, after, I mean, so after all that, then how did you start up Ruby Tuesday and your connection with Junior Seau. Okay, well, this actually is a big story because in 19, before 9-11, um, I became friends with Chris Nioli, who played for the Northern Saints. Okay. And my wife and I uh, bought a package at a juvenile diabetes uh, gala that included the airfare, hotel, and uh, we, we waited to when Chris was going to play because Chris was my, our neighbor in Hawaii Kai. Okay. So we wanted to see him play. They were playing Minnesota. So we booked our flights, everything happened, then, you know, 9-11 happened and everybody was scared. And um, But I, like I told my wife, we're going, you know, I don't care. Yeah. So we, we went there and uh, one of Chris's uh, sons, I think it was his son, one of his family members' son, really liked Ruby Tuesdays. So we got to visit Ruby Tuesdays and then on our uh, drive around, we stayed two, two weeks, we drove to Orlando. We found Ruby Tuesdays on the outskirts of Alabama and the panhandles of Florida. Okay. And just. Fell in, just fell in love with it. Got to tour the kitchen, got to find out what they do, and it's all fresh food, you know, and they do a lot of fresh stuff and salad bar to, you know, making everything in the back, which a lot of other, uh, the competition didn't. Now, to, to digress, the military, because now I'm in the subway, I'm the developer for subway, and the military is looking for a concept for their commissary. They'll build it, we operate it. Uh, the Admiral at the time wanted Bennigan's, which okay. I, went there, I, I actually took a trip towards some Bennigan's. I said, no, nah, not for me. Yeah. I, I just didn't believe in it. But I believed in Ruby Tuesdays. So I came back, took it to them. They said, well, be honest, we don't have any money because we're at war. Oh. So, well, okay. But I still believed in it. You know, and um, I was talking to the developers out at, in Mililani, the, the town center at the time, which was Castle and Cook. Yeah. And they had a um, I Love Country Cafe that was just not doing well. The old building used to be Yum Yum Tree. Yeah. And I, they said, why don't you get the guy out? We'll help you build this Ruby Tuesdays. And that was the start of our first Ruby Tuesdays. Wow, oh, awesome. And, yeah. And then how did, how did Gyukaku come about? Uh, well, you know, I think I was telling you earlier, I do these walks in Waikiki, and we usually try to do them late and go to hit a happy hour here yeah. and there. And we, myself and one of my employees, uh, Tim Yukis, and I saw Gyukaku on Lure Street pulled in there. 
uh, I was talking to our waiter, who's actually a teacher at Leilu Hula, and you know, worked part-time at Peter Kaku, and he said, hey, I know you from somewhere. And I went, and he goes, oh, wait, wait, let me think about it. Comes back, goes, you're a subway guy. <laughs> he said, well, we just found out today that Girokaku is going to start franchising. He said, you should think about franchising Girokaku. <laughs> and I said, what about yourself? You're, you know, you're a waiter when you, when you want to do the business yourself? He goes, no, I'm a teacher. <laughs> and a band teacher at that. So he said, uh, well, you know, here's, I'll get you a card. You can call this guy Koshi in California. That's where the headquarters is. Next day, I did it. So as I tell you, I learned not to hesitate. If you believe in something, you feel it, you got to do it. So I called them the next day. I don't waste time. Three days later, I was in California. Wow. Signed up to be their first franchisee in the United States. Well, I, I like hearing all about that and uh, how you're just, I mean, you carpe diem. I mean, you seize the moment after that one opportunity with Subway and you had that second chance. So I want to talk to you more about Beyond Restaurants, but we'll take a quick break, Teddy. Okay. okay? You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Ted Davenport. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Ted Davenport. He is the franchisor for Subway restaurants in Hawaii and he is the franchisee for Ruby Tuesday, Yukaku, and Rainbow Drive-In. And today we are going beyond restaurants. Teddy, tell me about Rick Nakashima. Oh, Rick and I go back to flag football in Hawaii Kai, the Chargers. <laughs> uh, Rick moved from California. He's from Seal Beach, California. Okay. And this was his, uh, his father was in the military and the mother was from here. And I, the father was from California. And they moved, uh, Back here, I think the father, his father passed away, and the mother wanted to come back home. So they moved here, and he was 11. I was 10 years old, and we became friends at that point. You know, then we went through, you know, intermediate school and high school. Uh, Rick was a long jumper and a triple jumper at track, uh, and uh, beyond, came on be actually a coach. So he went to Punoi, coach Punoi, okay. coach, coach around Coach University of Hawaii. But uh, to go back to, to uh, school, we were friends in school, hung out a lot together. He went on to Drake University for a year, came back to UH where we actually, you know, got back together and hung out. And uh, he, when he graduated from University of Hawaii, I was at the Hyatt. Yeah. And he was looking for a job. So I told him, hey, they got this job, you know, security, same okay. thing. He went down to apply for it, it was taken, so he ended up as a concierge. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens, you know. But Rick's got such a good personality, you know, he's a good guy, uh, great heart. Uh, as time went by, we you know, always remained friends. You know, he went his way, stayed at the Hyatt for a while, then started his own landscaping business. And he, he was doing uh, you know, some big work, even golf courses and so forth and so on. And then the economy collapsed and he was kind of uh, you know, working you know, job by job. Okay. Uh, came to work for me building my house. I was building my house up in Hawaii Kai. And when I came up with this uh, Ruby Tuesday idea, and I sat down, I was telling him about it, I showed him the menu, and I said, you know, I really believe in this thing. I said, I just got to figure it out. He said, well, if I had money, I would love to get involved in this, but I don't have any money. So about three weeks later, he called me up and said, hey, you know what? I just inherited about $120,000. Oh. I'll put 100% into this. Oh. I said, well, I don't want you to put 100%. But let's see, you put some of it, I'll make you a partner. You, you, uh, if you can look over facilities, the construction, and as, as we grow, and uh, just help me with that and some operational stuff. Well, long story short, he did a great job. 
uh, became a full partner, you know, and um, he's built four Girokakus, six Ruby Tuesdays. Jeez. Yeah. No, it's amazing. And one rainbows. Yeah, it's amazing <laughs> your guys, uh, you know, business relationship and personal relationship. And yeah, so how did how did your rainbows drive in in Kalihi begin? How did that evolve? Well, one of my buddies, uh, Chip, he uh, he's been in the restaurant and bar business for a while, and uh, Chip Jewett's his name. And yeah. He has Republics and a place called Play Bar. Just opened a Gabi and Wine in uh, Al Moana. Love Chip Jewett. Uh, <laughs> so he he actually said that. Uh, Hiroshi, Chef Hiroshi wanted to talk to me because he's now he's, you know, vice president of Rainbows and they want to franchise and he wants me to get together with the owner and maybe I can help him out in some way. Okay. So uh, Jimmy, the, who's uh, the family, they have Rainbows driving owner, his wife's family, and he's kind of adopted it. Uh, I think he had a 40 year career at United before that. So he's asking, he says they, they're looking to grow, expand, franchise, I can help them or maybe become a franchisee. So I told him, maybe I can help you, you know, put it together, you know, and uh, let, let me think about how, you know, I'm interested. And I went home, I said, no, I'm not interested, you know, because I thought, uh, you know, it's, it's taking on something when I'm kind of getting, you know, I'm getting older and, you know, <laughs> breaking up, breaking apart. You know? So I thought, you know, I, you know, I got more, I, I need time, you know, the, yeah. money, the money's there, but they need the time, you know. So I thought to myself, you know, that if I don't do this, who would? And Rick and I grew up, Rainbows was our favorite place. Oh, yeah. We'd, we would go to the Rainbows, we'd, I hate to say it's cut out of school at Kaiser. <laughs> I hope they don't take away my degree. Yeah. Um, but, and, and go to Rainbows, and, and, and uh, we would go to Rainbows before I we went to Wailai Drive-In. You'd go out and uh, boogie board or surf at Waikiki, we'd go to Rainbows. I mean, everything circled around Rainbows as we were growing up. And totally. I think, I think a lot of people on the, the east side and, uh, grew up with Rainbows Drive-In. So I, I couldn't sleep one night, and I said, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't call Rick. I thought, you know, I'll wait till I, I want to do it. So I woke up in the morning about 6, and I said, I'm calling Rick. So I called him at 6 a.m. I said, Rick, I got this deal. He said, I want to talk to you about it. He said, all right, what do you got? I said, no, I got, how about Rainbow's Drive-In? He goes, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and he learned to say yes real quick. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of how it started. Oh, I... so, so, you know, and, and we're, we're kind of the test baby because they never, it's a mom and pop's operation. Yeah. And it's a very successful mom and pop's. They do a great job. But it's for us to try to adapt to what they're doing and try to put it together and, and help the Rainbow's family you know, create this model. So that's kind of a, that, that was the challenge, I think, to me. Yeah, well, I, I love that. I'm, I, I, I go to Rainbows at least twice a week. I absolutely love Rainbows. And Ted, you know, you definitely, you go beyond the lines. And I know you have my book, but tell me about what happened with, with my book so far. Well, with you. you gave me your book, I took it home, and I put it on my coffee table. Yeah. Okay, and I was gonna read it. I was reading another book, and uh, I thought, okay, when I'm done, I'll read this one. Because I, I actually travel a lot, and I like to take a book with me. And uh, So my, my father-in-law, who uh, sold his business in California, moved over, he said, hey, you mind if I take a look at that book? <laughs> so he took the book, he went in his room, and I hardly ever see him in his room. And uh, I was thinking about it, when, knowing that I'm gonna come on your show, I said, you know, I probably should read your book. <laughs> he said, no, I'm gonna take it with me. Yeah. So he, t he actually, uh, one, he's away one month, he's going to Las Vegas, drive around California, and, uh, he, you know, he, yeah, he stole it. He stole it from you. He took your book. <laughs> he took the book. <laughs> Teddy, I want to ask you, I mean, you're so successful at what you do. What do you think the keys are for a, success, a successful restaurant? One is passion. Okay. You know, uh, if you don't have passion for it, you know, I, I, like to me, when I had Subway and I was a fireman, 6 a.m. I was in my Subway store, sometimes to 10 p.m. Did I feel like I was working? No, I didn't because I was passionate about it. In fact, I enjoyed it, look forward to it. You know, so you have to look forward to, you know, see people think of work. It's not work, it's, it's, it's something, part of your life. It has to be part of your, your, your makeup. And if you can't have passion for something, you're really not gonna succeed. Yeah. And, and the other thing is goals. You know, you gotta have goals. So what kind of goals do you have right now? Well, my, you know, when I was thinking, why am I doing Subway and the firemen? Why, what? What am I trying to do? Well, I want to, try, I want to create, I want to live back in Hawaii Kai. You know, I was living in Makiki at the time. I wanted to move back to Hawaii Kai, and I wanted to build my own home. So I had to go figure out what's going to cost me to do that and what I'm going to need over the next 30 years to pay that mortgage. Yeah. You know, and also have a family. So there's, 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 there's goal after goal, and you've got to keep on reassessing your goals. But, but when you have a goal, you've you got to figure out how to get there. And it, that's what I did. Now, why do you think so many restaurants fail? 
I think lack, lack of passion. People are, are thinking about the money versus the success of what that restaurant will be. They're thinking about what they need, not the, what their customers need. See, if you give the customer what they need, figure out exactly what your, your, diet, your, your demographics of your customer, what they eat, what they need, you know, what they can afford, not what you want. You know, that, that comes after. Okay. Now, obviously, Teddy, you're very successful. How, how do you define success? Well, that's a good question. Um, they said, I never look at money. Money's not, not a thing of success. I think success is when, you, when you're able to build a customer base, you know, and have those customers return. That, to me, is success. Okay. Now, looking back at your life, what, what's been your greatest obstacle that you had to overcome in achieving your success? You know, when, you, when you're doing restaurants, you have to rely on landlords and vendors and employees. So those three things, and banking, you have to have a good team. So you have to have good employees that believe in you, that come to work. You have to have a good landlord that says support you. You know, he has to be part of your team. You have to have your banking team. That, that right there, and once you can get that, and you get that nice round circle of good partners, that's where you're gonna find success. Because when things turn, like economy turns, things turn, they all can work with each other. Yeah. And, when, and, and you know what, I'd say, but you know, like of the 119 stores, we do have some bad landlords, and they don't, you know, they're not thinking long-term, they think short-term. They need to go beyond the lines. Absolutely. <laughs> now, Teddy, what makes you happy? What makes you fulfilled? Mm, 32 ounce beer and some chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> and golfing, huh? And golfing, yeah. yeah. You, know, you put those all together, yeah. success. Yeah. Uh, no, you know, what, uh, you know what makes me happy? You know, um, I love travel, I love sports, I love people. Uh, you know, it's really, I'm a really flexible person. Yeah. I, you know, I kind of just bounce off walls, you know. But, you know, I, I, little things make me happy. I'm not a you know a big big picture guy. You know, like I don't need a jet. I don't need that stuff. But I do love travel. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I'm taking off to Ireland tomorrow. So. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I always wanted to go. <laughs> I, I can't keep up with you know if you're here or somewhere else on a trip. I mean, you're. I never know where you are. But anybody anybody calls me, they call me everywhere I'm at. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're very reachable. Yeah, yeah. Now, through all of these experiences, Teddy, what have you learned about yourself? That, you know what, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. You know, you, you have to have, you know, I, you know, you watch, like I watch football and people say, wow, how come this guy's so good, how he's so great? Not, not because he's natural talents, it's because he, he put his mind to it. You know, why do some people uh, get drafted and some don't and some make the, the NFL? Because they put their mind to it. You really gotta put your mind to something and, 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 and go forward. I mean, I like to say you can be, you know, um, what they call a jack of all trades, yeah. master of none. But it's good to focus on something and really put your mind to it because you'll get better at it. Yeah, totally. Uh, before we wrap, I want to ask you real quickly, what do you hope to aspire to achieve in your future? Um, you know, I, I want to keep on taking like the Subway Avenue, which is really what I focus on. Yeah. And taking the success of the franchise system and make other people successful. I've done that with my sister-in-law, my managers. I like to give people opportunity. And to, and to let them know that you don't have to have money, that you have to have passion. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where I'm going, you know. You know, I, I, I've made enough baloney in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, Teddy, I, I want to thank you for being on the show today. Well, I mean, thank you for having me, Rusty. I appreciate the call, and, you know, this is great. Yeah, you know, you definitely found your greatness, and you're helping others find theirs. So really appreciate, you know, you coming on and sharing your experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit my website, rustykomori.com. And my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that this show inspires you to create a higher culture of excellence for yourself and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.